this debate is now, according to the CNN countdown clock, yes. Like less than 24 hours away. Are you ready? Are you ready to do I this? I think we're good. I think we're good. My team and I, we've been really working hard and, and coming up with questions that I think are going to be tough and really pit the candidates against each other. Uh, is and, that the key to a question that you want it to elicit some kind of response yeah, between them? I think so. I mean, there are interview questions, and, and we've been soliciting all sorts of questions from from all sorts of people. Uh, we, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people who worked in the Reagan administration. We've been talking to a lot of uh, politicos. People have been submitting questions from social media. But what I really am looking for, what we and the team are looking for, is remember in the first debate when Chris Christie and Rand Paul were really going at it yeah. on surveillance? And they were really both very passionate about an issue that's very important. I, I saw that and I'm like, that's what I want. Like a lot of those moments where I'm not really playing, but they're really debating the issues that are important. This is the same sort of thing that Chris Harrison looks for on the After the Bachelor at, after the final rose. <laughs> Always, an <laughs> Always an inspiration. Always an inspiration. And what, so, okay, so you pretty much know what questions you're going to ask. Yeah. You go in there. This is a hard job because it's anything you say, if you try to keep things on track, if you have to scold somebody, yeah. a certain segment of the population gets angry at you. Yeah. And how do you handle that? Are you concerned about that? Do you try to actively avoid that? Well, we've been doing a lot of mock debates. Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah, and my team has been throwing a lot of shade at me Who during those debates. Who plays Donald Trump in these mock debates? <laughs> like, no, one, no one you know. The Chewbacca out on Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard? <laughs> No, no, a very, a very smart and charming gentleman we have working at CNN. I see. And, and, and it's, but it's not just him. I mean, there are, anybody could really come up. Look, some people are going to have a good night tomorrow night, mm -hmm. and some people are not going to have a good night, and they're going to complain about it and probably hold it against the moderator or CNN or whoever. And, you know, that's just part of the... You'll have at least 20 million people watching this thing tomorrow. Maybe 30, who knows, right? I mean, you're going to have many so. millions of people Please watching this. don't set this. expectations that high. <laughs> well, you're writing the, you know, fall short of Kimmel expectations. But the reality is, the last one was like 24 or something. Yeah, yeah. Now it's even more interesting. Donald Trump has roasted pretty much every single one of those people, <laughs> and now he has to go stand in a room with them, which he doesn't seem to care about. He seems to be somewhat indestructible, doesn't he? He defies the laws of gravity in politics. Yeah. Everything, every time he does something, pundits in Washington say, oh, that's it. He sunk, and he goes up five points in the polls. I mean, it's real. In fact, if you look at the polls, he hasn't necessarily hit his ceiling yet. I mean, he's at 32% in the last poll, and like every, oh, he goes after John McCain's war record. Oh, he, you know, takes on the beloved uh, Megyn Kelly. It doesn't matter. He keeps on going up and up and up. I think people are really responding to what they perceive to be his authenticity, his outsiderness, uh, and his candor. He is very candid, isn't he? I mean, he really. <laughs> Unlike, I think the, his secret probably is that he actually answers. He just one of the frustrating things about watching an interview with a politician is they never really uh, want to answer the question the that you ask. It's them. the worst, and and I know this just from my from my day job, uh, and I'm worried about it for tomorrow night a little bit. We're going to be giving these uh, candidates an opportunity to really go at each other on issues and and on style and on and on leadership, and you know some of them are going to say. You know, they're going to pivot immediately to their seven-point plan for reforming the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And that's, I think, voters' eyes glaze over. I think yeah. that's one of the reasons why people listen to Trump, is he actually at least entertains the question. He might call it stupid, but, but, he, but he entertains the question. Yeah, we want to see wrestling. We don't really want to see people fighting. I mean, if, would you consider it an, an amazing success if one candidate were to punch another candidate tomorrow? <laughs> Yes? No. No. <laughs> no, I would not. But I would love them to really fight about these issues because this is, I mean, this is, they're not running for, for prom king. This is about, you know, who is going to be controlling the nuclear weapons. Oh, who is it's terrifying. Be... Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, having it at the Reagan Library, and we're having it right in the hangar. I don't know how many of you have been to the Reagan Library. None of but, them. But, but. <laughs> It's packed with it's packed with history. There's a piece of the Berlin Wall. There is Reagan's Air Force One. I mean, this this man was very very consequential, and th this is what's on the line. Well, when Donald Trump sees that wall, he's going to get excited. He wants, you know, maybe he'll use that as as the cornerstone of the wall he's planning to build. It's pretty heavy. There's, uh, I think people, you know, kind of, there's this debate as to whether um, like CNN and Fox and MSNBC news channels are, whether they're covering Donald Trump 
is making Donald. I don't wonder if it's fueling itself in a way. You have to cover him because he's the biggest story, but he's also the biggest story because yeah. you're covering him. There is a chicken and egg thing there, and I have read media studies about you know are, if covering him, even if we're doing so in a critical and fair way, uh, if that fuels it. And look, he's the front runner. I mean, that's the bottom line. He is the front runner, and he says what he says. The voters in polls say that they like it, and so we keep covering him. If Hillary Clinton did, were willing to do as many interviews as Donald Trump. We would be covering her as much as well. Right. But she's boring, let's be honest, and Donald <laughs> Trump is not. Yes? I can read your mind, and he's. <laughs> I would never say that. You would never say I that. I would never say that. You don't that. have to. Your face says it all. I am Jimmy Kimmel. If you like that, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all our latest videos before they die and go to YouTube heaven.